What up guys, how you doing? Jason Heine here, back at you with my Genesis collection. Just kidding. So, wow, what I, I really want to start doing overviews of some of my collection. And I really have to break this stuff up in parts and do like NES games collection, NES console collection, that type of thing, and so on and so forth. But this is the start of it. And I want to start by doing the NES because the Atari 2600 was the first real console that I owned. But the NES here was the first console that really just changed my life. So it, it was the console that, that we got, I believe we got it in 86 or 87. Uh, well, I know 87 for sure because I was playing Contra then. So we had to have gotten it in 86, a year after it was released in the United States. Very fond memories of this console. I uh, still play the stuff today. I don't own every game, of course, but I have a nice mixture of games that, that I enjoy or that I've always wanted to collect between um, some boxed copies. I have some, some more rare uh, and more hard to find games below in this case. And then I have some of the games that um, I've really wanted to protect in the coverproject.net artwork and also um, official cases here, rental cases. Um, most of you who have watched my the coverproject.net videos, I've done DS and Game Boy Advance cases, I've done NES, Super Nintendo 64 cases. All of this will be in the coming months uh, in time that I'll showcase. But first, let's start with the NES. So this is great. Just give you a little backstory here. Um, first of all, just so you know, all of my games, I have them out of their cases and um, dust covers just for ease of showing. I have a, a stack of dust covers over there that go for every game. Every game I own is cleaned, um, gone through, and put in a dust cover or case. So, but for ease of showing, they're, they're all out. This is probably gonna be a two-part video. This is gonna be kinda long, and I wanna try to condense it as much as possible and make it as tight as possible, but it's probably gonna be a two-parter, okay? So just keep that in mind. So here goes part one. All right, so first what I wanna talk about is over here to my right, these are official, well, majority of them are official Nintendo clamshell cases. Now, I don't know if they were exclusive to Toys R Us back in the day, but this is exclusively where we got them. My mother purchased these a long time ago, and they were anywhere between 89, actually no, because my grandma got me a few too, and they, she still had the price tag. So they were anywhere between 49 cents and 99 cents back in the day. And so I got quite a few of them for gifts and whatnot, which was great to keep the games in. But these have the official Nintendo logo on them. There's no other branding. So uh, I'm just going to assume that it's first party, but I, I don't know for sure. But what's nice about these is that they came in a few different colors and either this one is just faded or whatnot, but it looks like this is a light red. This one is more of like a, a darker red or a pink. I have yellow and blue. There's also clear, which is right here as well. But these are great cases. The, the difference between these and other rental cases is that these were specifically intended for NES cartridges. I mean, they just fit perfectly. They don't wiggle around very much. They're, they're very, very nice. And they just look fantastic in there too. I'm just gonna just show the games, man. You know, we're gonna be here all day. This is Kid Nicky. Capcom's Ghosts and Goblins. Great game right there. Destination Earth Star by Acclaim. I, I remember renting this and having a really difficult time playing it, but it's a, uh, like a spaceship, um, almost Wing Commander style type of a game. Very ambitious for the NES. Joust. Some of these games got, you know, like this was an ex-rental, you can obviously see, um, but. Solar Jetman, great game by Rare. This is a really fun ex exploration, outer space type of a game. Look at this, Athletic World. Good old fashioned Athletic World. If only, if only. NES Open, I love this game, a really good golf game. Uh, there was another another golf game that's in here somewhere. That, that I also like, but this one is probably my favorite because it's actually Nintendo branded. All right, so this is the, the Quattro Adventure by Comerica. This is the the gold 
game, if you guys know about this, it's four in one. And even has on the back, you can select your country. It does PAL and NTSC. You can select it there by a little chip in there. R really, really cool there. Comerica, obviously, um, Treasure Island Dizzy, Linus Spacehead, um, Boomerang Kid, and Super Robin Hood. Excite Bike. God, here's a, a copy of Turtles. 3D World Runner. Stealth by Activision. This is cool because. This was released a little later on in the, the NES's life. This is the three in one. So it's got Super Mario Brothers, Duck Hunt, and then also has the world-class track meet, which is really cool. Great, great version of Galaga. Sunsoft Spy Hunter, love the music. I, I just, honestly, Sunsoft had some of the best, some of the best composed music on this console. Um, so good. I mean, Batman, hello. Rad Racer 2. Great, great, great game. And by Square, you know, who would have thought? But I have a great review on my channel here. I did a few years ago, you should check out. 1943 by Capcom. Another great classic arcade game. Great shooter. Yeah, Tiny Toon Adventures. This is a really fun game, you guys. It's a platformer and you know you play as the, the tiny tunes and don't be fooled by tiny tunes it is a really really good platforming game good controls good sound and just addictive classic gameplay of course metroid very nice here wheel of fortune love the game show games done by what game tech yeah all new junior edition, it says. Mm, for the little one in everyone's family. Oh yeah. Space Mutants. Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. This is a, a great little game too. I remember this. Now there were a few different uh, Simpsons games on this console, but this one was a lot of fun too. Um, I remember him just going around everywhere using his rattle can, spraying everything. It was a blast. I got no shame. I got no shame. You know, they're very, Barbie games are collectible. They're highly collectible. And for some crazy reason, they're expensive. If you go look them up or even find them in the wild, they're, they're pretty expensive. So, I mean, why not get the original Barbie? Why not? Dodgeball. Here's some more Jeopardy. We've got uh, also by Game Tech with the same type of artwork and everything all new junior edition for the little one in everyone's family jellico city connection river city ransom great great fun game um hard though thing about it is that you kind of have to play it correctly and in the right order or you kind of are sol so this is one game I definitely recommend getting a strategy guide or some sort of FAQ to help you out with. That's a difficult one, but sure is fun. Another great uh, Capcom game here that not a whole lot of people know about or play, but this is a good platforming game, Yo Noid. If you remember Yo Noid, he was basically the uh, Domino's Pizza. I believe it was Domino's Pizza. Was it Domino's Pizza? It was, right, Steph? Yeah. It was Domino's? Yeah. Domino's Pizza, and he, he basically runs around on this pizza crusher, it's a uh, platforming game, and you have a yo-yo to use as your weapon, and it's hard as hell. <laughs> like, it, it's a really fun and addicting game, but it is it takes some mastering to get it down with the controls. Star Tropics. Really good game there. Starting to see a lot more interest in that game actually at this point. And then here is Star Tropics 2. The Flintstones, the rescue of Dino and Hoppy. I know, it's not the really rare one, but still good. Acclaim Arch Rivals. A really cool basketball game. Before NBA Jam, before all that stuff, we had Arch Rivals. And this was a, you know, done by Acclaim, so it's done by the same guys. It was a very uh, kind of, not so much over the top like NBA Jam, 
but it had lots of um, you could you know you could basically like attack your opponent and knock them down and it's it's an all-out basketball war <laughs> that was a ton of fun all right I'm gonna go ahead and do another stack of games here David Crane's A Boy in His Blob. This was a great, great game. I remember renting this, and it's in a way, it's almost like a, a strategy, point-and-click adventure, kind of all-in-one. You control this boy, and he, he goes around this, this these levels, and he has this blob that is next to him, and if you feed the blob different um, items, he will do different things. It, it kind of reminds me of um, The Lost Vikings on Super Nintendo, like everyone has a different ability. It's kind of like that, but it's just you and your blob. And a lot of really fun there with this game. Should definitely check that out. Absolute entertainment did this game. Of course, RC Pro-Am, hello. Wonderful game, love it. Classic, takes me back. California Games by Milton Bradley. This is a lot of fun. Uh, cycling, hacky sack, I think they call it, I think they call it football even in this game. Um, I believe there's a skateboarding game and a couple others, but a lot of really fun. Hard to master, but a really fun game there. California games. Road Blasters, not the best port of this game. I've played better for sure, but it's still nice that they decided to release one on this console. 720, I was just talking about this uh, on my last uh, recent pickups video for August. A great, great skateboarding game and very ambitious considering the arcade was mind-blowing at the time. The control was 360 degrees and I remember just being able to kind of go anywhere in the game. It was uh, quite something. And, and this isn't bad either. This is a pretty good game, but this is 720. Laser Invasion by Konami. The Hunt for Red October. Jellico's Robo Warrior. The original Rad Racer. Capcom's Section Z. This is this is a very difficult and extremely fun um, basically shooter game. Um, side scrolling shooter. Very, very fun. And you know, not that expensive, so you can find that out in the wild. If you do, pick it up. It's a really, really good game. Kickle Cubicle, just did a review on that. Really fun puzzle game there. Here's a little RC Pro-Am 2 right here. Another extremely fun game. <sighs> extremely fun Barking Dog. Um, this is one of the few games on the Nintendo to feature four-player multiplayer with the multi-tap. And it is just a ton of fun. They really up the graphics and they up the power-ups and just overall, it's a much more of an experience in the RC Prom franchise. Now, I remember a while ago, I checked this game went between 50 and 100 bucks. So I know that just the, you know, the demand for it and the rareness of it keeps going up. This is a really, really cool game and I'm happy to have it in the collection. Trade West High Speed Pinball. Dragon's Lair, right? Right? On NES? Crazy. Another game that's pretty ambitious to be doing that on the NES because um, it's not the same game, just so you know. There's no way they can do the animations like that or the, even the, the video, but um, still a fun game. I have here an original Bomberman on the bottom of the stack there to round out part one. Very cool. So guys, that's part one. I went through three stacks. Uh, the next part, I'm gonna talk about the rest of the stuff. I'll do uh, a stack of games there, all of my jewel case, boxed cover project games, some tension there, and then I'm gonna just sh overview my um, boxed game collection. So thanks for watching. I'm trying to break it up so it's not so long. As always, if you like what you see here, please feel free to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook. It's the EMU Review, and I'm on Instagram, guys. It's Jason.Heine. Have a great day. Catch you later.